And so, you know, the place that we typically start is what we call clustering. And that's the idea of bringing your first party data, all of your customer data into the Posty environment. And then, you know, both leveraging your first party attributes, what they're purchasing, you know, average order size, lifetime value, category purchases, Mm -hmm. you know, responsiveness to marketing, upsells, cross sells, et cetera. And then blending that with the wealth of third party data, you talked about RFM data, but there's deep demographic data and superficial demographic data and psychographic data and transactional data and RFM models and you name it. There's a wealth of that data that can be overlaid. Right. And then what Posty makes possible is to automate the cluster analysis, leveraging your both your first party attributes and third party attributes to look for the natural clusters of unique segments within your CRM. And you may be a business that has three or four segments, or you may be a business that has you know, eight or nine segments. And all of a sudden, if you're able to understand the differences, sometimes nuanced and sometimes very macro, between different segments within your database, you start understanding those customers better. The same way that the personal shopper working, you know, the shoe department at Nordstrom, you know, understands their customer base who comes in regularly. You can leverage data and machine learning and data visualization to gain those insights. Once you start understanding, you know, more about why these customers are engaging with you and who they are, and then you can start building your hypotheses around how to build more meaningful relationships through content and marketing. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Hey there, I'm Steve Hutt from Shopify and welcome back to the e-commerce Fastlane podcast. Now I know there's plenty of podcast choices both in direct-to-consumer marketing and in Shopify and just the fact they're here today means the world to me and I know it does for my featured guest. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show. We have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, if you're an ambitious lifelong learner, then you're definitely in the right place. I also highly recommend to get the full value of today's episode that you click through from your podcast app of choice. Go over to e-commerce fast lane and there you'll find the show transcript, links, and then any resources that we mentioned today. Now, today I'd like to welcome my guest, David Fink, who is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Posty, and they're at posty.com. And what they are is a data technology company. Really, what they're doing is they're transforming the direct mail industry, and they're really enabling through their platform to perform more like a digital platform. So think of things like prospecting and retargeting a lot more. It's really interesting how direct mail um, has this massive resurgence now, but it's their platform is a little bit different because they actually are acting, like I said, I like a digital platform. So you can actually talk about attribution and the success and the ROI of the program. So, hi, Dave. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Thanks for having me. That was an awesome setup. Oh, Super okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Tiny bit of research before recording today, but you know, I'd like to talk more uh, on a high level first because uh, you know it's it's better from the founder about specifically the problems uh, that Posty is solving for Shopify brands today. Sure. We've been around for almost exactly six years. Nice. And the problem that we're solving is making direct mail behave more in line with how you know the marketer's expectation is. Mm-hmm. But the original problem that we were solving was the pain of living through kind of a, a time period as a marketer where we became you know over dependent on a couple key channels for growth and retention. And I'm sure you know, a few of your listeners are shy to this point. You know, Facebook is a behemoth. Google is a behemoth. There are some really valuable things that you get by engaging in those channels. But there are some dangers. And we started seeing, you know, some of those challenges rear their heads, you know, call it six, seven years ago. And that's really what we're trying to solve. It's how do we 
in a world where the expectation is so high with regards to how we leverage data and testing and optimization and measurement and insights and scale and efficiency through these technology platforms that sit on top of media channels, if that's our expectation, but there are only a couple key digital platforms that give us all of that, and those platforms you know, can be very challenging to drive not just scale, but profitability through if you're spending too much of your time, too much of your budget, too much focus on them. How do we take everything that we've come to enjoy from those platforms and apply them across our marketing stack in general? And not every channel is, is right for that level of sophistication or that level of addressability. But we found direct mail or refound direct mail after many years of really focusing on digital, like many you know, advertisers certainly attached to you know, Shopify plus brands. And we just started getting really excited about the scale, the potential, the addressability of it, and got really, I think, disappointed when we quickly learned that there wasn't much in innovation and technology that allowed us to engage with the channel the same way we do Facebook or other social channels or programmatic or retargeting through a digital world. And that's been our mission. It's how do we take all that is good about digital channels and bring it to the direct mail space, which in many ways solves a great deal of the pain that we're feeling in the competitive landscape that is Facebook and Google right now. Yeah, I definitely would agree with the challenge with kind of having the limited channels of just, you know, focusing on Google and Meta and just the, the, the rising CAC right now, especially right now where, you know, we're recording near the end of Q4 right now and just finished BFCM and, you know, top line revenue is up for like a lot of brands and a lot of categories, but, you know, until the CFO actually takes a look at the numbers, <laughs> I think they're going to be really surprised that is it true net profitability or not? And the reality is probably no, because the CAC is so high. I talk with our team and marketing teams that I managed before launching Posty about this idea of these concentric circles of, you know, marketplace type platforms, you know, Meta, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Snap, programmatic platforms, et cetera. They give us these really deep targeting capabilities. You know, we can activate our first party data and train lookalike models, et cetera, using, you know, all these, you know, modern mathematic capabilities built into those platforms. And oftentimes you get a bit disillusioned early on where you're able to throw bullseyes. You know, they give you the ability to be really targeted with really focused budgets and you're competing with less advertisers for that really focused prospect customer base. Right. The nature of those customers when you target them correctly is that they're early adopters. They're excited about being first to discover your product or your service. They have a high expected lifetime value. And if you build a business model based on, you know, your expected CAC, or mm -hmm. expected lifetime value that you're seeing from those customers, and you would just kind of think in terms of that'll just scale efficiently, that that becomes the mistake. All of a sudden, you max out the addressable market in that bullseye, and now it's time to go to the next concentric circle. And those customers are a little harder to convert. There are more competitive brands bidding on those same ad impressions, so your ad rates go up. Those two things mean your CAC goes up. Chances are, as a cohort, they have a lower expected lifetime value. And so now you're paying more within each concentric circle mm -hmm. to acquire lower value customers or customers that provide more challenged expected lifetime value. And I think that's why we've seen lots of brands, especially in the emerging D2C space, scale aggressively because they were able to spend into it. But you end up turning around and you're looking you're like, we 3x, 4x revenue, but we 10x you know, media spend, and that's not sustainable. It requires you to think about omni-channel and efficiency. It also makes you hold those channels, Meta in particular, accountable for the quality of customer and the efficiency that they can deliver rather than just pure scale. Right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Dave, for sharing that because I'm I'm total in total alignment about that. I am really curious though about the origin story of Posty. Are you able to talk a little bit about maybe how the pieces came together with both you and the founding team? Like where did the desire and the expertise come from to even want to build this product that now really helps brands diversify through direct mail? So Jonathan Ned and Rip, my co-founder and I had been working together at a technology studio slash incubator in Santa Monica. And we had this really interesting vantage point where we were investing in, I think, over a six, seven year period, maybe 
70 different consumer internet businesses. And many of them were two-sided marketplaces or direct-to-consumer brands. Some of them grew very rapidly into millions of customers and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. Others remained small for a while and took a while to get their footing. But when you think about that time period, that was you know 2011 to roughly 2000 through, through 2016, that was the rise of social. That was it's the, it was the rise of YouTube and it was the rise of Facebook slash you know Meta and then Instagram and it was a really a magical time you know we lose sight of the fact that you know 15 years ago which wasn't that long ago it was all about you know paid performance media it wasn't about mm-hmm. storytelling and engaging consumers and you know social platforms that allowed you to truly build a relationship over time. And there were the days of actively investing in building fan pages, and there were the days in, you know, learning how algorithms work. And there were certainly, you know, then overlaying all of kind of the performance capabilities of speaking uniquely to different segments within your different addressable markets. Everything was working for a while. And because of it, every advertiser, every brand, every business, you know, flocked to those same channels and those, you know, it's the law of supply and demand where, the more demand flowing into the same level of supply. And eventually those channels kind of hit a ceiling on the supply side. Ad rates just naturally go up. Right. And then, you know, those platforms became very good at, at figuring out how to make money. And that didn't necessarily benefit us as advertisers. Right. And so the origin story really was authentic. It was, hey, we had learned so much about testing and optimizing, how to build relationships with consumers, how to leverage the blend of storytelling and quant marketing in order to have more control and be able to build businesses faster than ever before. And all of a sudden, the challenges of scale started popping up. And so for us, the origin story came from, holy cow, this isn't going to last forever. We need to get ahead of this. Let's start looking for other channels. Because we're digital quants, been building consumer internet businesses for a better part of 22, 23, 24 years. We did not immediately jump into offline, let alone direct mail. We started kind of surveying other media channels that potentially could help us build a more omni-channel playbook and find efficiency. And there just wasn't much going on back then. You know, TikTok mm-hmm. didn't exist. Snap existed as a platform, but didn't have a great ads platform yet. We played with Tumblr and we played with Twitter. And those just weren't built to engage consumers in an advertising environment the way that some of the other platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Google did. And so for us, we just needed to go back offline and try and explore some of the traditional big scalable channels as ways to to find efficiency and augment what we're doing online. And because we're quants, everything that we do, the way our brains work, gravitates towards the ability to leverage first party data and be very predictive and test and learn and capture conversion data and understand what's working. Direct mail in the offline world was the one channel that provided those capabilities. It's big and scalable. Anybody with a physical address is reachable through the mail. There's really interesting ways to leverage first and third party data for prediction and performance improvement. In most cases, it's a very measurable channel, so you can have very transparent understanding of what's working, what's not. And so we just wanted to use the channel as marketers. We, 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 we didn't set out to build a business in, in the direct mail space. We just thought that this would be a great channel to incorporate into our marketing stack. And we very quickly learned that while there's no shortage of providers out there, they just tend to think the way that direct mail was executed 20, 30, 40 years ago, very mm-hmm. executional, not super data driven, not very dynamic or integrated. And so that led to this idea of, hey, you know, direct mail doesn't look that different executionally right now than display advertising online looked, you know, back in the early 2000s before there was a a double click that became Google Display Network or a Trade Desk or DB360 or DataZoo, et cetera. (laughs) And maybe it's possible to build that technology layer that sits on top of the channel that brings it to life in a in a more modernized way. And that actually allows us to efficiently manage the channel, integrate with the rest of our marketing stacks and, and maximize performance. So that was the origin story. And the business that we execute today is no different at a macro level from that initial idea whiteboard session that that turned into, you know, our 12 page initial you know, PowerPoint presentation presenting the business to the world. And that doesn't happen often. 
But I think because it started from a place of authenticity and an organic challenge that we were facing as marketers, when you solve a problem that you have, it tends to give you a better shot at you know, building an authentic business. And I'm really proud of that. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. It's just one point I just wrote a little note here about the first party data, because that's the conversation I have a lot with the brands I manage, you know, being able to leverage the first party data inside Shopify. And there are some tools from the digital side of SMS and email, being able to understand this RFM modeling, they're calling recency, frequency, monetization. And, you know, the high level, what I teach a lot of my brands are is about, you know, do you understand who your active, your at risk and your churned customers are? And then in their buying history, do you understand the product association between product one and the statistically relevant next product they may want to purchase and the timelines around that. So that would be the first party data. And then I also talk a little bit about the zero party data. I think about, you know, there's a few different tools that really help maybe through quizzes that really help maybe enrich the customer profile. That would be the zero party data. This is data that has been actively given by an end consumer saying, yes, my birthday is here. I'm male, you know, pets, dogs are for me, whatever it are sizes and colors and, you know, whatever the, the sort of questions you want out or the skincare kind of thing, that's the zero party data. And then that gets enriched on the customer profile. So let's talk a little bit about Posty about it. Like, so how do you actually work in relation to enriched customer profile in Shopify, the zero party side? And then how do you create campaigns around the first party data so you can like anticipate potentially the next sale or avoid kind of at risk potential churned customers to get them to make a second purchase. That's how we think day in, day out. And I think more marketers are thinking that way than ever before. You know, if you think about like how you know, products used to be sold and businesses used to be built in a traditional retail world, you know, I mean, it required hiring really talented salespeople to work the floors and have a relationship with their customer base to get to know them. I, you know, I remember my mom going into, you know, Nordstrom's or Bloomingdale's or whatever store of choice. And she had, you know, they weren't really personal shoppers, but it was the the same salespeople in the different departments that she worked with for a decade. And they knew her and they had her in their Rolodex and they knew when certain products would show up and come, you know, in inventory that they thought she would like. They would call her, leave her voicemails, et cetera. And then fast forward to the world that the brands that you're engaging with, you know, living in every you know, attribute is being stored in a database. Uh -huh. Your brands know every product page that a prospect shopper or an, an existing customer engaged with. They understand what's been added to cart, what's been purchased. They, they understand, you know, are there, are there individuals that are purchasing multiple items at a time and that respond to upsells or cross-sells? They, they respond to recommendations. Who's an email shopper? Who's someone that, you know, ends up there through, through search? And all that data is available to brands that were built online. And so the key becomes, well, you can't just have a series of personal, you know, shoppers that are sitting there, you know, <laughs> sifting through databases. Right. You know, it's it's how you leverage all this data and activate this data to help, you know, shape a positive customer experience. And, you know, the net result of that hopefully is a more profitable business for yourself. So it's done through kind of all those ways that you just talked about. You know, first, you got to, you know, have your data pipe set up and Shopify, my understanding, does a lot of that for you, which is right. the power of, of building on, on a pre-existing platform. Then it becomes, you know, a game of kind of thinking through and understanding the nuances of your business. And, and then how do you leverage that data for insights first and foremost? Right before you're running campaigns against that data, and whether it's prospecting campaigns shaping you know lookalikes or predictive models, or whether it's CRM segmentations and clusters, you know it's what can you learn from that data? And one of the things that that we've learned from you know mid to large size businesses who have you know mid to large size data pipes at that at this point, you know, is not every customer or segment within your your CRM is there for the same reason. And engages in the same way. And so therefore, you're not going to maximize the experience that every customer has with you if you're engaging each one of them the same. And so you know, the place that we typically start is what we call clustering. And that's the idea of bringing your first party data, all of your customer data into the Posty environment, and then 
you know, both leveraging your first party attributes, what they're purchasing, you know, average order size, lifetime value, category purchases, Mm -hmm. you know, responsiveness to marketing, upsells, cross-sells, et cetera. And then blending that with the wealth of third-party data, you talked about RFM data, but there's deep demographic data and superficial demographic data and psychographic data and transactional data and RFM models and you name it. There's a wealth of that data that can be overlaid. Right. And then what Posty makes possible is to automate the cluster analysis, leveraging your both your first-party attributes and third-party attributes to look for the natural clusters of unique segments within your CRM. And you may be a business that has three or four segments, or you may be a business that has you know, eight or nine segments. And all of a sudden, if you're able to understand the differences, sometimes nuanced and sometimes very macro, between different segments within your database, you start understanding those customers better. The same way that the personal shopper working, you know, the shoe department at Nordstrom, you know, understands their customer base who comes in regularly. You can leverage data and machine learning and data visualization to gain those insights. Once you start understanding, you know, more about why these customers are engaging with you and who they are, and then you can start building your hypotheses around how to build more meaningful relationships through content and marketing. And then you can start thinking about how you leverage the third party data in order to find more individuals that are prospects out in the world that look like these different segments within your customer base. And you can be more focused on how to you know, present the benefits that appeal to them that may be different than the benefits that appeal to prospects that look like a different customer segment. Now, online shopping can feel risky for some customers. You know, imagine if your order arrives in the wrong size. This totally happened to me recently or in the wrong color or it just doesn't look right on you. And there really can be hundreds of reasons why you may want to return a product. And I totally get it. And that's why Loop Returns makes it easy for Shopify brands to encourage exchanges rather than refunds. We all know that returns don't equal goodbyes, they equal new hellos. And Loop really has a slick process to make it easy for a customer to have a fast return or exchange. Now see why thousands of Shopify brands like Pit Viper, Somersault, and Princess Polly, they all choose Loop as their return partner. Now is the time to improve your post-purchase experience. So go check them out today at loopreturns.com. So try not to go too deep here because, you know, structural data engineering and machine learning are real things and they're (laughs) complex. Yeah. But I think the more, at least at a high level, that marketers understand, you know, the value and what those tools and mathematics allow you to do, the more you can start thinking, about how to you know, activate against them and what channels you can activate against them. And that's one of the reasons why I love direct mail. It's a very high acquisition CRM channel because the nature of the personal feel you get, you know, reaching someone at home with a tangible physical piece of advertising. But you also have the addressability of a digital channel that allows you to leverage insights and activate campaigns against those insights, which lead to tremendous performance. I got a question around the attribution side and being able to justify the success of Posty and, you know, doing your clustering analysis, getting that data into Posty and kind of like understand these unique segments. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in on that. And then having, you know, some brain power around, well, what sort of campaigns are successful based on your business and then executing on, you know, some creative to get out to these addressable markets that you're talking about. But in the end, let's talk about the different ways that Posty is able to attribute engagement and then obviously a conversion. Let's talk about some of the options that work with within the platform. Yeah, so that's exactly right. It's all fun in games until it comes time to yeah. <laughs> you know hold yourself accountable, right? Did yeah. we do a good job here as a marketer? Or did we do a bad job as a marketer? Right. And, and <laughs> so measurement is the closed loop. And you know, I'm dating myself, but I remember the very late '90s, early 2000s, calling into brands who didn't even have a title dedicated to a digital marketing person, and trying to engage with traditional marketers and, and t- using talk tracks that sounded like 
the internet is measurable. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing to know what advertising yeah. works? And <laughs> so I. I mean, that was real. It was, that was like the promise of the internet. Uh -huh. And when you think about where we are today, everybody's like, yeah, of, of course. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, how do you, of course you have to measure. Like that's, that's how Google works and Facebook works and, yeah. you know, it's programmatic. Direct mail works the same way. And the beauty is that your listeners are all, you know, starting in a digital environment where they're capturing that conversion data, that transaction data at a checkout, right? You know, they know what was purchased. They know who purchased it. They know where that person, you know, lives or where the item was shipped. Right. And if you have those three data points, all of a sudden, you know, measuring, you know, CAC or CPA, you know, ROAS, lifetime value, et cetera, are all possible within the direct mail world because the nature of direct mail requires that all audiences start with a name and physical address. You have to tell the U.S. Postal Service who to send this piece of mail to. Uh, and so okay. every campaign starts with audiences built within you know, your campaign structure. And those audiences in the postie back end are all mapped back to a physical address that gets printed onto each piece of your campaign. And there's an attribution window. And so if an individual who, you know, you chose to include in one of your direct mail, you know, test cells or ad campaigns, you know, receives a piece of mail and then ends up coming to your digital platform and transacting, you're capturing that conversion data. And that data can be passed right back, you know, through Shopify into your Posty account. And then all the data hygiene is taking place on the back end of the Posty platform to ensure accuracy and a one-to-one -one match between this individual during this attribution window received this piece of creative in this campaign test cell and ended up coming you know, to your site, purchasing these items at this you know, order value. And therefore, you know, here's what your CPA looks like, here's what your ROAS looks like. And now you've complete insight into you know, what's working. And then with all the third-party data overlays, you can then also start understanding what is the unique makeup of converters versus non-converters. What learnings can we take away to shape, you know, better audiences for next month? How can we tailor our creative a little bit better to drive performance gains as well with the insights that we're capturing each time we deploy a campaign and capture data? So you mentioned about the attribution window. So it was just kind of like almost like a FOMO where, hey, this is the promotion. This is the campaign we're running right now. It ends on December 31st, 2022. Make a decision because here's the deal. And then knowing that if someone, you have a name and an address that is associated and that's where you're sending out this campaign through Posty, if they make a purchase, you're attributing that and that's part of the analytics from within the Posty platform. Yeah, well, at this point, you know, Thousands of advertisers have sent, you know, tens of thousands of campaigns and, and hundreds of millions of pieces of mail on the platform. And because the platform, you know, captures all that data in aggregate, we're able to constantly look for analysis on what the optimal attribution window is for, okay. you know, different advertisers in different verticals, okay. different, you know, market segments, et cetera. And I'll use a story that I experienced when we first started experimenting with the idea of building Posty. My wife is not a marketer. She's a teacher. So she doesn't, you know, think about, you know, engaging with ads the way that, that probably you and I do and most of your listeners do. You know, we're looking at through very specific lenses. She's just being a consumer right. and uh, engaging organically. And so I get the opportunity to kind of watch how she engages with ads. And very, very early on, I saw her pull a piece of direct mail out of our mail stack. It was for a food delivery, meal kit delivery business. And I didn't say anything. I didn't want to create any bias. I just saw that piece of mail sit on our kitchen table for about two weeks. Nothing happened. I saw that piece of mail transition into a stack of, you know, promotions that she held on to on our kitchen island. And that was about two weeks. And then I got a text from her at work saying, hey, if you get home before I do, there's going to be some food, perishable food delivered. You know, please put it in the freezer. Right. And I showed up and before her and sure enough, there was a couple of boxes with, you know, frozen um, pre-prepped meals. And it was not an inexpensive transaction, several hundred dollar transaction. So I literally watched this direct mail ad show up, sit in our house for four weeks, get hundreds of impressions every time you know, we walked through the kitchen, sat down at the table, et cetera, you know, saw this ad. And then eventually she you know, was motivated to try this product. And that 
the light bulb went off and it was like, holy cow, right? Like mm-hmm. the impression isn't the number of people you reach. The impression is the fact that a piece of direct mail can live, you know, in someone's home before they actually respond. And therefore you're generating, you know, frequency and familiarity in a way that would require you to reach someone a hundred times through Facebook, um, the same person, right? A, a high frequency cap. And so that was that first moment that we realized like, hey, we need to look in terms of windows, kind of how long, you know, conversions can be attributed to a piece of direct mail, which are is very different mentality from a digital ad where they either respond or they don't to that ad. Yeah, you, know, you might drop a cookie that lasts for a while, but you know, but that last click has become something that is kind of never left the other marketers, you know, measurement bag. And so on average and and different verticals, depending on how the complexity of the decision process is often tied to the AOV, you know, the average attribution window tends to be about six weeks for a direct mail campaign, meaning, you know, from the day that your campaign, you know, starts entering people's homes, you will receive converge, you'll be able to affect that behavior for up to six weeks. You start looking at more complex consumer buying cycles like insurance, automobile purchases, home, fintech, you know, th- things that require a bunch of research and are less impulse you know, driven. Sometimes you, know, you might have a four, five, six month attribution window where a single piece of direct mail can impact that buying decision. So nice. really interesting difference between you know, what we're used to in digital and kind of this physical world media channel. So it sounds like your wife, so just so I'm clear on it, so it sounds like how she got targeted was more the demographic side of this company saying, hey, we want to do a campaign for this kind of like a community. And they did a direct mail campaign outside of her maybe actively signing up to a newsletter or showing some interest by giving this first party data either through an opt-in or whatever. So it sounds like she got targeted that way. And then I can see the benefits of it sitting on the island for, and the, you know, having some interest in the making decision to pull the trigger. So that would be kind of like the net new customer there's also the option on your platform. I guess I would call that a prospecting audience, attracting new customers. But there's still the website retargeting opportunity, which is the first party data. So I guess they both can work synonymously. You can have a prospecting audience and using demographic deliverable addresses based on an area that you believe fits in the psychographic and demographic and all the things that you mentioned already. But then there's also the first party data of like, how do I get the second sale? Or how do I print something and saying, hey, um, they already bought this purse, we believe, or these shoes, we believe that this is the second sale. Statistically, we can prove it in our data that this is the likely next purchase in the time frame. And let's run a campaign at scale around, they've already bought this, it's time for them to show them this. So just want to get your feedback on, just to make sure that I'm clear about the prospecting side of it and then the retargeting side of it. We love the direct mail channel because it's one of those rare channels that can be applied full funnel to your marketing stack. So you nailed it. And we break out campaign types into three core buckets. There's lots of nuances on a you know client by client basis within each of those buckets. But those three buckets are you know top of funnel, which is you know in many cases, you know, kind of the most exciting piece for, for growth brands, which is net new customer acquisition prospecting. And that's exactly right. It's using all of the data and predictive modeling and machine learning available in order to really efficiently find individuals who are likely to convert based on leveraging you know your first party data as machine learning training sets to build audience extension or prospecting audiences that look most similar to your best performing customers. Then, you know, you go to the complete opposite end of the funnel and that's, you know, the CRM's world. That's exactly right. How do you reactivate lapsed customers? How do you increase the, you know, the lifetime value of existing customers? How do you tighten up the frequency with which they purchase? How do you drive referrals? How do you increase average order value? You know, all of those things that we think about email or SMS for are all not just possible, but highly, highly effective through direct mail. And then there's the mid-funnel stuff, right? There's all the digital first-party data. You've worked so hard through maybe some of your active digital channels to drive lots of traffic, which you know hopefully results in some level of awareness. And you have prospects that are engaging with your lead forms or product pages, or even getting as far as adding things to cart and maybe you know not quite ready to to bring out you know bring out their credit card and complete the transaction. 
And all of that data can be activated to build both audiences, but also in real time to deploy trigger campaigns so that when you see audiences that behave in certain ways, you can then use direct mail as a way to try and close the loop and and help them feel comfortable enough to, to spend money with you to actually become a customer. So all three of those kind of steps within your funnel are you can activate campaigns in direct mail and they can all be you know, huge difference makers, both complementary to your existing digital marketing, in some cases may be better performant yeah. than your digital channels. I love the net new kind of prospecting audience. It's so interesting. And um, I just, I, I'm really aligned with this and I'm excited to kind of share this podcast under the wild for a lot of people, because I think there's some really good learnings in here. I guess kind of in closing, Where's the platform headed now? So you very clearly are at scale helping a lot of Shopify brands. We don't you need to get any specifics about, you know, the successes of them. It's very clear that there's lots and lots of success knowing that you can do all these different types of campaigns, net new, you know, using your CRM to reactivate and, and, and understanding both first uh, and zero party data. So I get all that. Are you just continuing at scale with your platform? Is there more awareness for what Posty can do? Or are you going to enrich or enhance the service offering that Posty has maybe moving into 23? It's a great question. And you know, for us, we're fully committed to unlocking the power and hidden potential of the direct mail channel, even beyond what you know, we've, we've accomplished thus far. Our product vision and you know, what we want to bring to the market, to this vertical is very big. And, you know, it seems like as much as we've accomplished, there are, you know, 42 <laughs> additional capabilities that, you know, we're working on and can't wait to push. And then, you know, tomorrow there'll be 43 and the next day 44. <laughs> it's endless. Yeah. It really is. And the reason being is we just don't think about it as just you know, as direct mail. We think about it as providing tools to help consumers better discover and engage with brands and that add you know, value to their life and helping advertisers, you know, leverage the ability to engage with prospects and customers in a meaningful way to add value to their consumer relationship and therefore obviously help them grow as businesses. Yeah, there's certainly, we started in the digital world. There's all sorts of kind of twinkles in our eye about how we continue to help integrate DM with, you know, you know omni-channel marketing. And you never know what the future brings. A lot of that will be contingent upon, you know, advertiser needs and, you know, just what goes on in the landscape um, and how consumers are engaging with brands and choosing to spend their money. That will certainly always drive us towards um, prioritization. But I think the key with Posty is, you know, we're focused at changing the way that brands engage with the direct mail channel. And it's a channel that reaches the entire addressable market in the U.S. And there are no shortage of brands that are already spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year in this channel. It's crazy to think about, but it is a, a tremendous channel. And there are many brands that are either have not yet engaged with the channel or just dipping their feet in the water or maybe haven't even realized that it is a channel that can be thought of as full funnel. And so as long as we can continue to bring, you know, kind of cutting edge technology and capabilities, you know, to the direct mail space, there's a lot of, you know, areas of us to focus before we get distracted. This is lovely. So where do you want to send these site listeners right now? So they, obviously you can go to posty.com and I'm assuming there's like a, going to be a contact form there. We can sign up. What, like what sort of service do you want to offer those that are, you know, likely on Shopify plus have a somewhat of a decent product market fit. They have some data behind them. They're ready to explore into this direct mail channel. What sort of service do you want to offer those listening today as kind of a next steps? The best approach is always engaging with our team and doing, you know, we call it a discovery call. It's, you know, your team getting to know us, our team asking lots of questions about you and, and where your business is and getting to a place where we you know, have a deep understanding of potential needs and, and capabilities that we can provide and, and hopefully helping build enough excitement within your team that it makes sense to actually jump into a full demo of the platform and bring to life the capability of activating the direct mail channel at, at scale through, through Posty. So I would highly encourage anyone curious or interested to hopping over to our site at posty.com, P-O-S-T-I-E.com. And there's a tremendous amount of case study information, product and channel information that can get you started. And then if you're still interested in going deeper, which I think most will, (laughs) uh, 
uh, forms or just request that initial meeting and we'd love to engage. Well, thank you, Dave, for coming on the show today. And thank you for like for building this platform. I really believe this is going to be a very exciting 2023. I know certainly for the brands that I manage, I know there's 20 some thousand people listening to this episode right now too. So I'm hoping they also have got a lot of value that, you know, direct market is an opportunity. It is fully scalable. It's fully trackable. It's full funnel from net new, the prospecting side, all the way through uh, to kind of reactivation, the whole browse and collection recovery and there's there's lots of interesting opportunities available and think working with your team directly i think will i think every business like you said is probably very nuanced and i think that i love the you know i feel like you're almost like a business partner to those that are interested and you're willing to get on a call and chat through kind of where are you at today and where do you want to go let's talk about what we can do both with the first party data the psychographic and machine learning and demographic data and rfm modeling and all the fun things you guys do i think it's tremendous and i want to thank you so much for building this and uh, i wish you amazing success into 23 and beyond i appreciate it look you clearly get it you understand <laughs> you understand exactly what we're working on day in day out and you understand your customer base your client base and and those that engage um at a sophisticated level in the shopify platform this was an easy conversation i really appreciate it my pleasure all right well have yourself a great afternoon well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.